Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be breaking down some of the key concepts in systems thinking. We'll look at interconnectivity, feedback loops, causality and more. Systems thinking is a method of understanding how various elements within a scenario interact with and influence one another. Imagine it as looking at an elaborate tapestry. Each thread in the tapestry represents a different part of a situation or a system. And systems thinking helps us to see how these threads are woven together to create a larger picture. This approach is incredibly helpful when we face complex problems. Whether it's in organising a bustling school, running a business or addressing global environmental issues, systems thinking aids us in identifying how different aspects of a problem are interconnected. It's not just about fixing individual issues. It's about understanding the deeper patterns and relationships that cause these issues. By adopting a systems thinking perspective, we can move beyond simple cause and effect solutions and start to see more holistic and sustainable ways to address challenges. This method doesn't just provide us with a toolkit for problem solving. It offers a new mindset, a way to reframe the challenges we encounter and find more effective, long-lasting solutions. So why is systems thinking so crucial? In our increasingly interconnected world, the challenges we face are often complex and multifaceted. Systems thinking gives us the lens to see these challenges in their entirety, to understand the dynamic interactions and to make more informed decisions that can lead to better outcomes for everyone involved. In the following segments, we'll explore the key principles of systems thinking and how you can apply them to make a real difference in both personal and professional contexts. To start, we'll focus on one of the most fundamental aspects of systems thinking, interconnectivity. Imagine a system as a spider's web. When a single thread of the web is touched, the whole web responds. This is much like how elements in a system are interconnected, each influencing and being influenced by the others. Let's consider a family as a simple example. In a family, each member's actions and decisions affect the entire household. If one person has a challenging day, it might affect the mood of others. Similarly, a happy event for one family member brings joy to the rest. This network of relationships and influences is a perfect example of interconnectivity in a system. Another example is an ecosystem. In a forest ecosystem, everything is connected. The trees, the soil, the wildlife, and even the weather. The health of one species impacts the health of others. For instance, if a certain tree species declines, it might affect the animals that depend on it for food or shelter, which in turn impacts other parts of the ecosystem. Interconnectivity in systems thinking teaches us to look beyond isolated events or behaviours. Instead, we learn to see the connections and how changes in one part of the system can ripple through and impact the entire system. Understanding these connections helps us make more informed decisions and anticipate the broader consequences of our actions. Now, let's talk about the importance of a holistic perspective in systems thinking. This principle is about looking at the entire system rather than just focusing on its individual parts. It's about understanding that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Consider a car as an example. A car is more than just a collection of parts like the engine, wheels and gearbox. To understand how a car functions, we can't just look at these components in isolation. The magic happens when all these parts work together in harmony. The engine provides the power, but without the wheels, the car won't move. And even with both, without the steering and brakes, the car wouldn't be safe or effective. This is much like any system we encounter in life. In a business, for instance, it's not just about individual departments like sales, marketing or human resources. It's about how these departments interact and work together to achieve the company's goals. A holistic perspective encourages us to step back and see the bigger picture. 
It helps us understand how different parts of a system interact and impact each other. This understanding is crucial for effective problem solving and decision making. By considering the whole system, we can identify solutions that address the root causes of problems rather than just treating the symptoms. In this part, we explore the concept of feedback loops and their pivotal role in systems. Feedback loops are processes where the outputs of a system loop back and become inputs, influencing the system itself. These loops can be positive or negative. Let's discuss the reinforcing loop first. Picture a snowball rolling down a hill, gathering more snow and momentum as it rolls. This is a reinforcing loop where an action produces a result that then amplifies that original action. In the case of population growth, the more individuals there are, the more potential there is for births, leading to even more individuals. It's a cycle that builds upon itself, creating positive or sometimes negative growth. Here's how this particular loop works. The central concept in this loop is population growth. The loop starts with population, which refers to the current number of individuals within a given population. As the population increases, it leads to more births per year, assuming that the birth rate remains constant or increases. These additional births per year then contribute to an increase in the population, further reinforcing the growth cycle. The R in the middle of the loop stands for reinforcing. It indicates that the loop's nature is to strengthen or reinforce the growth of the population. In the context of population, this loop illustrates how populations can grow rapidly if there are more births than deaths, creating an exponential or snowball effect of increasing size. But what about when things can't grow forever? That's where the balancing loop comes into play. Imagine our snowball rolling towards a flat plateau. The plateau represents the balancing feedback which naturally slows down and eventually stops the snowball's growth. This balancing feedback works against change, maintaining stability in a system that could otherwise run out of control from the reinforcing feedback. So, balancing feedback is like a guide, nudging the system toward a particular goal or state of equilibrium. As the system gets closer to this goal, the balancing feedback's influence diminishes, allowing the system to settle gently into its target state. Conversely, if the system strays too far from the goal, the balancing feedback strengthens, accelerating corrections to bring the system back in line. Now let's visualise this with a thermostat in a room. When the room gets too cold, the thermostat switches on the heating, warming up the room. As the temperature approaches the target warmth, the heating eases off. That's the balancing loop in action, ensuring the room doesn't get too hot or too cold but stays just right. This diagram represents a balancing feedback loop, often found in systems thinking to describe self-regulating processes. The loop is labelled as a balancing loop and is also described as a negative or goal-seeking loop. Here's how it works. The thermostat is the controlling device that monitors and regulates the temperature. The temperature gap is the difference between the current temperature and the target temperature set on the thermostat. When the current temperature deviates from the target temperature, the temperature gap, the thermostat responds by generating heat to reduce this gap. As heat is introduced into the room, the temperature rises toward the target temperature. The process continues until the current temperature matches the target temperature, at which point the thermostat will stop the heating process to maintain the desired state. Let's turn our attention to causality and delayed effect, two critical aspects of systems thinking. Causality is about understanding the relationship between cause and effect within a system. But unlike a simple one-to-one -one relationship, in complex systems, the effects of an action can be delayed, leading to a chain of events that unfold over time. Consider the example of deforestation. When we clear forests, the immediate effect might be more land for agriculture or development. But the story doesn't end there. 
Trees are like Earth's lungs. They absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Removing them has a delayed effect on the climate. The full impact of this deforestation might not be felt for years or even decades. As the trees disappear, less carbon dioxide is absorbed, contributing to global warming. This warming changes weather patterns, potentially leading to extreme weather events. But because of the delayed effect, the connection between the initial act of deforestation and these far-reaching climate changes may not be immediately apparent. This is where systems thinking becomes invaluable. By considering not just direct, but also long-term indirect effects, systems thinking enables us to foresee and mitigate negative outcomes that are not immediately obvious. It helps us to plan more responsibly, considering not only the immediate benefits of our actions, but also their potential impacts down the line. In our next video, we'll continue to unravel the complexities of systems thinking. We'll dive into leverage points, where small changes can have big impacts, and systems dynamics, which show us how systems evolve over time. We'll also look at how all these principles apply in various settings, from business to healthcare, 